Good morning and welcome to Sabbath School today. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we are very excited to learn about the Holy Spirit and see his personhood and he is the God with the Godhead. And so teach us this through the 1888 message. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to lesson number three entitled The Divinity of the Holy Spirit. How do we know that the Holy Spirit is God? Well, because the 1888 message helps us to see the divine love of the Holy Spirit. A wise person told me, if you'll follow the agape, you will soon conclude the Holy Spirit is God. Well, it's impossible for agape to reside in nature or in the forces of nature. And neither can agape be conveyed by a force of the universe. Agape is the substratum of morality, and therefore neither nature nor any non-sentient thinking creature can originate agape. Agape derives from the highest intelligent being in the universe, which can only be God. And the Holy Spirit is the one, we are told in Romans 5 verse 5, who sheds the love of God abroad in our hearts. Therefore, the Holy Spirit administers God's love to us. He gives us righteousness by faith, which is agape by faith. The much-anticipated latter reign of the Holy Spirit will be an unprecedented outpouring of agape. The Spirit is a person who loves. Paul implores the church members at Rome in Romans chapter 15, verse 30. He implores them by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, it says, to pray for him, the apostle. And only a person can love. The Father is a person. He loves us. Just read John 3.16. The Son, Jesus Christ, is a person, and He loves us. Just read John 13, verse 1. And as a person, the Holy Spirit also loves us. Now, if you love, you love forever. Abraham Lincoln is quoted as saying that love is, for, is eternal, and love has its source in God. For the Bible says that God is love in 1 John 4, verse 8, and God is eternal. The new covenant, which God promised to Abraham, was the blessing of the Holy Spirit. You can read that in Galatians chapter 3, verse 14. And Abraham believed God's promise, it says in Galatians 3, 6, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Well, the Holy Spirit is the active agent in making Abraham righteous. Righteousness is moral power. It is right living. And righteousness is agape. And the Holy Spirit puts this divine love into receptive hearts like Abraham's was. In the book of Hebrews, the apostle writes that the Spirit is the Lord. That would be Jehovah who spoke the new covenant in Jeremiah 31, verse 33. This is what Hebrews 10, verses 15 and 16 says. Now notice, the Holy Spirit also is a witness to us. For after that, he had said before, this is the covenant that I will write with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. Well, here we have Paul saying the Holy Spirit, Jehovah, promised that he would inscribe my laws into the hearts of Israel. Well, the point to be noticed is that the laws derive from the Spirit. An atheist astronomer who studies the universe is able to discover certain laws governing it, but he would never claim for the cosmos a moral operative. The atheist would never say the universe is benevolent and loving. He would be more inclined to say that the discoverable laws of the universe are just there, and one had better work with them and not against them, or else suffer the consequences. The Holy Spirit cannot be just a force, an influence, or an operational law of the universe proceeding from God. 
The Spirit is law. The Apostle Paul wrote of the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 2. Only divine intelligence can make moral law, and particularly law with a foundation of, of agape. Jesus recognized agape as the basis of moral law when he said in Matthew 22, verses 37 through 39, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, this is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It's beyond logic, human logic, to think that cold, hard facts of the law of physics could put the Holy Spirit's love of justification by faith into human hearts. Therefore, by following the agape, we conclude that the Holy Spirit is God. The plan of salvation to redeem sinners is agape through and through, devised by three persons. It is agape that makes the Godhead one. <clears throat> it is agape that motivates the Father to reconcile the world unto himself through Jesus Christ. It is agape which actuated Christ to serve humanity and then suffer and die on his cruel cross in order to save the world. And it is agape which moves the Holy Spirit to convict the world of sin, of righteousness, justification, and judgment in John 16, verses 8 through 10. The Holy Spirit loves us so much that he initiates conviction of our need of Jesus' righteousness. You see, Jesus is the source of righteousness because immediately following the word righteousness there in John 16, verse 9, Jesus said, because I go to my Father. The Holy Spirit is so intimately united with Christ that Jesus said, he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you, in John 16, verse 14. When Jesus was received of the Father following his resurrection, his sinless life and perfect sacrifice was such a demonstration of love for sinners that heaven's approval was signified by the release of the Holy Spirit in an heretofore unprecedented way at Pentecost. Pentecost was a fulfillment of the new covenant promise, which was the blessing of Abraham. We mentioned this earlier in Galatians 3.14, the blessing of Abraham being the Holy Spirit. The Spirit was bestowed, the Spirit bestowed Jesus' righteousness upon the world. That would be God's pardon for the whole world of sinners. That was bestowed. God bestowed the Holy Spirit who gave forgiveness to the world. And for those who appreciate this gift of divine love, given at such great cost, they are accounted righteous, just as their father Abraham uh, was made righteous in Galatians 3, verse 6. The Holy Spirit's divine love accomplished the atonement of the sinful heart with God. The Holy Spirit activated faith in the sinner. The hearts of the apostles and thousands of other believers were so reconciled to God at Pentecost that they could no longer live for self, but for him who died for them. It was the Holy Spirit's love that did it. And the believer's oneness with God was manifested by obedience to all of God's love-based commandments. The Ten Commandments became for them as so many new covenant promises of the Holy Spirit. Their human hearts were spontaneously moved to obey God. And so, it's the Holy Spirit whose love for the church and for the world accomplishes the bestowal of justification. God's great pardon of the world literally from hell, which is the second death. The Holy Spirit reveals that God was in Christ, revealing the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 19. It is the Holy Spirit who puts my laws into their hearts and in their minds. Hebrews 10 verse 16, which is in fulfillment of the new covenant. As such, this is the cleansing of the sanctuary truth. The Holy Spirit, in the 1888 message, points the way 
to a clearer understanding of the consistency between justification by faith and the sanctuary truth. The 1888 message is the only understanding of justification by faith which is parallel to and consistent with the cleansing of the sanctuary and is in harmony with the law of God. The 1888 message is the only gospel that doesn't nullify or diminish the law of God. By opening up our hearts to appreciate this truth of the sanctuary, we have an entirely different experience. Let the Holy Spirit guide your mind and heart into this clearer understanding of the gospel sanctuary truth. Following, by following the agape of the Holy Spirit, it leads us to the conclusion that the Spirit is one of the three persons of the Godhead, along with the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this subject of the divinity of the Holy Spirit. And it is the agape of the Holy Spirit which leads us to conclude that he is God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.